What's up everyone and welcome to another Rust Industrial video. I'm Austin and today we're doing the easy version of the auto large furnace, uh, you know, smelter system with a bonus automatic raid shutdown that we'll talk about at the end. Quick, uh, quick disclaimer, um, I am aware that you can daisy chain, you know, um, large furnaces to each other. Uh, it just requires some different setup that in the end I think might actually be confusing to some players. And so I'm doing this as a kind of really easy and using splitters and standard components with standard setups uh, for, for, for the regular player. Um, I will cover the differences between these and how to daisy chain large furnaces in a later video. All right, so we're going to get started with a quick de demonstration. Um, here I have the input boxes. These are the product boxes. So the system starts here and then ends down here. We'll cover that in the end. I've got a box full of wood and a box just to dump ore. It doesn't matter. You can have wood or ore in either or com combination. The, the conveyor is not going to care. Uh, just the way I like to set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump in just some small amount. Let's see. We'll grab a little bit just so it's not excessive. We'll done. That, there we go. That'll work. And um, so it's going to pull it in and it's going to transfer it based on the the filters that I have set up. It's going to enter it into the two furnaces. They're going to auto ignite and essentially they're just going to cook down until they run out of things to transfer out. So once the output box has no longer has anything to transfer out, um, this conveyor over here is going to send a signal to shut everything down, specifically shut wood transfer down so that uh, this can no longer be refilled and that has already there see it's about there it goes so now we have whatever wood is left is going to cook down make some final charcoal for you um, that automatically gets taken out every time that once they run out of wood they will shut down and it's ready for the next time you dump stuff in um, so we're going to start this with talking about how to put the components together and then we'll finish it up with wiring and demonstrations and the discussion of of the two modes you could call of safe mode versus stack mode all right so so to get this thing built it's very very simple um, i have two boxes here as my primary input boxes again this is totally subjective you can do whatever you want um, each one of them, we're just going to kind of go around until we get back here. Each one of them has a storage adapter on it uh, and they're daisy chained together. So the output of this one's going to the input of this one. Again, this is subjective. There's a lot of ways you could do this. This is just a way I like to do it. Um, the output of this is running down and then up over to this, this uh, splitter here. Again, don't have to do this. It just looks cool. If you shut the door, it covers the pipe nicely totally unnecessary. I just like to do stuff like this. So the output of this is running to the input on this industrial splitter here. It's two, two of its three outputs uh, are running to the inputs on these uh, two conveyors here like this. Uh, very, very simple. The top conveyor is the ore conveyor. This is where I'm filtering out the ore I want. And I have metal ore, sulfur ore, and high quality metal ore. Uh, now I have the max. So this is the target container, which would be, you know, these are the target containers. Uh, the max, I have the filter set to 12, 24, and 6 because for the small furnace, you know, a good ratio is 6, 12, and 3, um, but these cook faster. Um, it's not exactly two times, but this actually works out really well, and I think it's easy to remember if your goal is to only cook, and this is like, we're technically talking about safe mode, I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that in, in greater detail here in a bit, but if you're doing it this way, 12, 24, and 6 is a good amount to transfer based on their smelt rates. Um, so you can just use that. The any item, uh, you want to leave this filter mode to any item because you don't want to have anything specific going on. You want to be able to pull any ore it sees regardless of whether other ore is there or not. Uh, and then down here we have the the wood conveyor and I have this set to 6 and that was just through testing that I wanted the minimum amount of wood I could keep in any large furnace at any given time so that once it's done um, transferring uh, cooked products out, it'll shut down as soon as possible. Uh, and so six seems to be to be the magic number. I have, I have yet to have it shut down on me with six six wood. And so that's just set to six. The max output is uh, the max target container is set to six. Again, no no special filter modes, just leave it in any item. Uh, and that's all you got to do there. So the output of this these two are, are running, the each, each output here is running to an industrial combiner, and then its output is running to the splitter. And this is where uh, I made a decision not to daisy chain these furnaces together because of, again, things you had to do with boxes and stuff. Uh, I'll cover that later. I think for the standard player, this is actually just the easiest way. Um, so you can think of this as the blue furnace and this as the green furnace. Um, so the output of one of these outputs here is the blue furnace, so that output runs to its, its single, storage adapters, no other storage adapters on there to here. 
its output of that storage adapter is running to this this um, combiner on the ground here. Um, same thing with the green. We have the green furnace. Its output from the splitter is running to the input on its only storage adapter over here. And then its output of that storage adapter is running to the other side of this uh, combiner here as well. And then those two, so that's the output of the two furnaces they brought together here. This yellow pipe here runs over to this splitter here that then takes, uh, it's basically here to filter these into two, two sides because I need to separate the charcoal from the products uh, for reasons we'll discuss when we wire it up. But this, it runs the input of this splitter here. It's two outputs of that splitter run to each of the inputs on these two conveyors. One of the conveyors, uh, the top one here is the charcoal, no settings, everything kept blank and set it to any item. And the bottom conveyor here is the products that we're cooking. So frag, sulfur, and high quality metal. Again, any any item, no, no settings. We want both of these to grab anything they see, anytime they see it, uh, as they go. Uh, the outputs of these two are running to the this com this combiner here to bring them back together. Um, they both get dumped, everything gets dumped, charcoal included into this first box. And then just for fun, uh, I went ahead and just filtered the charcoal and sulfur into a second box with a very, very simple filter. And so I just set charcoal and sulfur to be filtered from this box to this box to separate the two you know, for reasons that if you play Rust are obvious. So again, simple filter just for fun. Uh, and that's it, that's the termination. We started there, made our way through all the, the pieces, came back and here's where we end. Um, so the next thing that we are going to do is we are now going to um, wire this all up. Uh, first thing you'll notice, there's a un, you know, a disconnected branch here. We got a button, this branch, and that HBHF sensor running this way. Ignore those for now. We're gonna cover that at the end. That's the automatic RAID shutdown. It's an optional thing. Um, so we'll hook that up as a bonus at the end of the video. Um, so here I've got a, you know, this is a mock power source. So this is any battery setup, what, however you're powering your battery, windmill, solar, combination of the two generators, whatever you're doing, it's going to some battery. That battery would then run to a branch like this. That's what that's all this is here. And I've got the branch out set to eight, and I'll, we'll discuss, we'll, we'll add that up as to why, but the branch out here is running to this first power in on this first conveyor here. From this point on, all we're doing is daisy chaining uh, the conveyors together and then the last conveyor to that timer. And so we can follow that with the red lines, the red uh, wires here, the electrical pass through of this one is running to the power input on this conveyor here. It's pass through is running to the power in of this conveyor. Conveyor, um, It's pass through is running to the power in of this one. It's pass through is running to the power in of this one up here. And then it's pass through, I've changed the color to blue because th this pass through is actually running to the timer. Um, so we've got the output there running to the timer. Um, and the timer itself is set to 0 0.25. This is simply to protect the uh, the igniter from breaking. The output of that uh, timer is gonna run all the way over to the input on this igniter, and that's it. And the reason it's set to eight, it's very simple. Each, each one of these conveyors requires one unit of power. The timer requires a unit of power, and the igniter requires two power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And so, uh, that's it. That's really as far as like like managing the power minus the automatic RAID shutdown, which we'll cover. It's it's a it's a small increase. Um, that's that's all you have to do to wire this up. Uh, now that's to power everything. The next thing we have to do is we have some reference signals to send out. So we will start over here. Uh, the over here the filter fail, which is this green wire here. So filter fail out of specifically the product conveyor. You don't want to send this out of the charcoal conveyor or else it'll just keep giving these things wood and keep making charcoal until you run out of wood entirely. You want, that's why these are separated. We have to be able to send a signal out of, hey, when we're done cooking off the products, you know, we want to stop sending wood. So the filter fail on the products conveyor, this green line here, so filter fail out is running to the, uh, up here is running to the turn off on this this wood conveyor so filter fail of the products conveyor is running to the turn off input on the wood conveyor um, from the other conveyor up here and so i guess over here we don't use the filter pass on this one we don't use the filter pass or the filter fail on the charcoal one uh, the of the the ore conveyor the the raw ore conveyor uh, we're not using the filter fail but the filter pass on this one is running to the turn on on the um, the wood conveyor. 
So this is how we're turning on the wood when this thing starts transferring, or it's gonna send a signal saying, hey, I'm, I'm transferring something that I that I know I'm supposed to, and here, so it's gonna, it's gonna send a signal, it's gonna turn this one on, which then allows wood to pass. When this starts passing wood, it also has, uh, down here, its filter pass, this purple line, is running to the side, the toggle on of this timer. So as soon as it starts to pass wood from the wood container, uh, it's going to send out a filter pass that it's passing what it's supposed to pass, which is gonna run this timer for 0.25 seconds. And that's going to run this igniter to turn on the furnaces. And that's that's literally, that's it. It's uh, as far as hooking things up for the, for the system, you'll notice I've got stuff hooked up up here, but we'll cover that in the end. You don't need that stuff for this to run. At this point, you have everything you need for this to function. Some notes on it, you'll notice that sometimes this timer runs even though it shouldn't be. Um, I tried a whole bunch of different variations of hooking this stuff up. I think it has something to do with the furnaces, but it doesn't matter. Um, it starts them every time like it's supposed to, and occasionally we'll just, you'll hear it click uh, for seemingly no reason. It's not affecting anything, and since this is set to 0.25 on the timer, it's not gonna damage anything. Uh, you can just ignore that. But that's that's pretty much it. So if I go over here and throw in you know, something here, it's going to, in fact, this time we'll put in uh, you know, very small amounts since it takes forever to cook, but I'll throw in some, some, some metal ore. And you'll notice that, you know, there it was, it was running again for no reason. But see, again, it doesn't matter. It does these in spurts and for reasons I don't know. Um, so you'll notice that, right, so now when we add things in, it's a little, it, it, it's slower. And so that's why these filters might not be ideal for this, that makes it not quite efficient. It doesn't matter. Um, it's still putting in minimum ore. And so if you're using it in this way, uh, you're, you're, the goal here would be presumably that you want these to process things faster, but you don't want the risk of, of, of a bunch of, of, of stuff being in there for someone to steal. And so that is inherently what I'm calling safe mode. So now we're gonna cover the safe mode versus stack mode. Um, in its configuration, this mode, or in this way, I should say, this is what I call safe mode. Um, safe mode is you're only putting in um, the minimum amount of ore based on these parameters. You're saying, well, put in a max of 12, a max of 24, and a max of six, anytime you see those things, so that at any given time when these are outside, um, they only have a little bit of ore in them. So if someone were to jump your wall or come running up, the most they're ever gonna get in the furnace at any given time is one of these. And so, and if, and then when, you know, paired with the, the automatic raid shutdown, that's all they'll get. They'll get up to six wood and they'll get up to, you know, 12 ore, 12 sulfur ore and six high quality. And that's it. In this way, you'd be taking advantage of the speed at which these furnaces cook, um, but not necessarily the amount of inputs that these furnaces can use. And so the other way, so that would be safe mode. The other way is that you could use what I'm calling stack mode. And so to do that, all you would do in this case is add 1000 and actually it would be whatever the stack size is of the server you're playing on. But if it's vanilla or, or whatever it is, let's pretend it's a vanilla server. If the stack size is 1000, you would just make this 1012. That's not, that's 10,012. 1012, you'd make this 1024 and this 1006. And so what that's gonna do, if I apply that, is that now they're going to pull in a lot more ore and they're going to stack this up. And what will happen is because the stack size is, is 1000, once this hits 1000, it's going to make a second stack to the right of, of you know, 12, 24, or six, depending on which one you're talking about. And then you'll have two of the ones that you chose to, to do. And so actually I should not put this one. This one should stay at six. We don't want that one to double stack. And so again, uh, you actually would very unlikely do that depending on how much of this you have. Most of the stuff is recycled. So you can see here, that's what I wanted. There it is. The You have a, about a thousand on this first one and then the, the 12, 24, and, uh, and, and this would, will be six once it eventually it gets down. I can just take a bunch of that out. Uh, and so uh, the idea here is that you can, let me just fix those. The idea here is that you can uh, have double stacks in you know you know what you could call stack mode or whatever. Um, so now it's going to maintain the six that it's originally supposed. There it goes. And so here we have you, know, you can see it. We've got two stacks of a thousand, and then we've got 
uh, just the, the overflow over a thousand of those minimums, the, the 12, 24, and six that I talked about before. And the reason this is a good idea is that you don't need stacks of a thousand over here. So now you, you, you risk less you know, yeah, you risk a stack each, so you have a stack of each that you could lose if someone ran up and took it, but you risk less over here. And so if you're running in stack mode, you're just overflowing the whatever the stack size is of your server to spill over into two more slots, which is going to increase the amount of output you have. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do while these these furnaces are just cooking off is we're gonna hook up this this automatic RAID shutdown. And so before we hook up anything over here, I'm just gonna you know quickly show you where these are running. The output, the power out of this of this branch right here, uh, if you track that over, is running to the power in on this HBHF sensor. So power out, not branch out. The power out is running to the power in of this HBHF sensor. The HBHF sensor is power out is running again the blue line still is running to the turn off specifically on the or conveyor um, this white line is the button this is a reset button um, it is running just for aesthetic reasons it's just running up along the the blue line here and it's just running behind the hbhf sensor it's not connected to anything it's just so it looks cool and it runs down straight to the turn on of the same conveyor so so output of the hbhf goes to off button goes to on power out of this branch powers this hbhf sensor here and that's it um, so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to unhook power from this right here and instead i'm going to run this power uh, out of the same branch, except I'm going to run it over to the input on this branch here. And I'm going to run this branch. And I guess we'll change the color just for this spot. We'll make it orange. I'm going to run that to the input on the, the conveyor that the other branch used to be hooked up at. So I'm going to run that to there, right to there. So there we go. And I'm going to set this again. This here doesn't change. It's still eight. This doesn't change because from this point on, we still need eight like we did before, but now we have this extra one here. And so this currently is sending out eight. This is using, uh, you know, eight arriving, but then we're only getting seven out of here because this thing's using, using one. So I have to set this to, I think it's 10. Let's see, that should give me eight there, one there. I need actually 11 because I need two two going to so we need two coming out of here because that you need one to power the sensor and one to pass through so you're going to set this to 11 you're going to set this one to eight so that we have two left over and that's it so now this uh this hbhf sensor is running and actually let me just put myself in vanish mode there we go so as far as the game is concerned i'm not here um, you know, you, you're, you've got this thing whole running, people are out here, you've got it in, in stack mode, uh, and it's just keeping this stuff full and running. And so what this does is, let me get out of range of it and take myself out of vanish mode. If I, and if, if you look at the, the conveyor on the bottom right over there, that's the, the, the wood conveyor. And the one on the top right is the orc con conveyor, which is what we have this set to. If I were to run up to this, it's going to shut off this or contain con the conveyor and stop passing or into this into this um, conveyor so now you would lose everything in here um, once someone entered the into your compound because now but but everything in here has stopped conveying so you're so max in this mode you're going to lose is that so if i were to go in here and remove all of the ore from this let's remove everything we've got left there we go so this is going to automatically shut down on its own i'm going to put myself back in vanish mode uh, so that the the HBHF sensor doesn't see me and I'm gonna pretend that I'm the player and so you know I, I, I come back and my furnaces are off I've lost you know a couple of stacks but everything's off it, it, it stopped running because this thing had shut it down for me uh, I'm going to change this back to the uh, default the safe mode and to show you the difference there so now I've got it back in safe mode and that's just the stack sizes I'm using here just the the max the max settings for the for the target containers and so i come back in and and it's you know it's off clearly they're not running because someone came in and this thing shut it down for me if i go to start it i'm just going to turn that back on it's going to automatically just start pulling based on you know you know right now it's in safe mode so here we go this is going to pull in there it is so now we're in safe mode amounts right so this is like if you were leaving like if you were going to be running uh, running around and not home and couldn't defend your base or whatever, uh, you could set it in safe mode by just adjusting these parameters so that 
this thing only takes in that much. And so if I were to now let me go out of range again, and if I were to make myself visible again in the game, there we go. Uh, if I were to now, if I'm a raider and I jump in, I see your, your smelting stuff and I come in to your smelters, it's gonna detect me, shut off, and all I'm gonna get max, if I can get it right away, is what's left, which is these tiny little amounts. So depending on what you do, you know, using this automatic shutdown is actually very simple and can save you a ton of grief uh, if, depending on how you do it. Again, even if you're in stack mode and you have, you know, two stacks of, of, of sulfur and metal, that's still not, I guess it'd be, it'd be two each, you know, four total, depending on how many you have. You know, I set up two just as this demonstration, but uh, that's still not a huge loss. And now they've shut down because they cooked off what was left and it's not gonna transfer any more stuff out. I'll make myself invisible again. And so the, the people leave or whatever, they didn't get much, you come home and you can just hit this button from inside your base and it's gonna turn everything back on and and repopulate and keep on going. And there it goes, and that's it. And it'll do that unless a non-authorized player um, comes into range of your HBHF system. So obviously you'd have to you know talk about range um, you, know, you can see my video on turrets. I actually talk about HBHF sensor range. Um, you could actually sub in a turret to target if you wanted, and that would shut it down. Um, but anyway, that, folks, is about all I've got. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. Otherwise, you can get me on my Discord. See you later. <laughs>